Welcome everybody to the Bell Vista Studio show. We have a special guest today, Jane. Jane is a Camtasia expert, video expert, I'm going to say. Video, all things video is what I want to, I want to label you that. I don't know how far it goes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm really excited because, <laughs> um, I'm really excited because I have really no idea about Camtasia. So I am really curious to learn and see if it's something that I want to add to my toolkit. So I will hand over to you to showcase and take us through whatever value you want to share with the audience. Fabulous. And thank you, Kim, for the wonderful welcome. It's uh, great to join you here and I'm delighted that uh, you want to know more about Camtasia. Um, I've been using Camtasia for uh, roughly nine, eight to nine years. Um, I'm a systems trainer uh, in the travel industry and um, a lot of classroom training and uh, my client asked me to make some screencast videos to complement and work alongside the face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, they'd also, they'd already chosen Camtasia. It was brand new to me. I'd never really made videos, didn't really know other tools and um, I'm self-taught and uh, as soon as I started using it, I I liked what it did. I liked the fact that you could record your screen, you could annotate it a little bit, so you could draw a, an arrow drawing attention to some part of the screen, you could add text, and then make a video that then could be viewed anywhere at any time, as many times as, as you needed it to. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I just really fell into Camtasia, and then um, I've been freelance, so um, as a systems trainer, I decided to help people learn how to use Camtasia as well. So I do some Camtasia training and um, make gifts and things. And so um, I thought I'd just jump straight in and show you what I do in Camtasia. Um, Camtasia is not just a screen recorder, but it's a video editor as well. So um, you can take any film footage, so whether it's from your smartphone, whether it's from your webcam, and you can use that in Camtasia. You can build your project, add lots of pictures in and things like that, and make a video. So Very what I'm going to do is I'm going to share you um, some of the examples that I do, uh, which are my Camtasia tips at the minute. Um, so let me just start sharing my screen. While you're um, doing that, where, you said you're self-taught. Where did you go to? Was it something like YouTube, or how did, or were you just experimenting? Did you download a free trial, and then you're like, "What is possible in here?" Uh, that's a really interesting question, Kim, because I've just posted something on LinkedIn recently. How do you start learning a new software? And this is specifically Camtasia. So I have mm. some. Um, general recommendations. Uh, one of them is how I started, which was just going to techsmith.com. Techsmith are the makers of Camtasia and also Snagit. And they have some learn the basics um, videos. And it's about 10 at the moment. When I started, there was five. Really basic introduction, just to familiarize yourself with the software. Um, yeah. And then I just played. I just had a go. I made so many mistakes. Um, you know, questions of, oh, why is that there? And why is that disappeared? And why is there a black screen? And lots of questions. And just really sort of muddled my way through it. Um, mm. Which is now I, as a being a learner, I now try and help other people in that situation by giving them some helpful tips. And um, just really those, not mistakes, but those errors that um, may, you know, delayed my project, I try and help them along the way. So learning the basics of videos, um, TechSmith do some fabulous free webinars monthly um, where you with one of their trainers. Um, TechSmith also do a certification course. So if you buy maintenance, you can go online and do an online certification. And of course, I do one-to-one -one tutorials and um, coaching. So um, lots of different ways to learn depending on how you prefer and 
time scales and things. Yeah, that's cool. Well, just for people watching, if you check the description of the video, you'll be able to find out Jane's um, business and get in contact LinkedIn as well. Um, and you run a meetup as well. So we'll put the link to that in the description as well. Fabulous. Thank you, Kim. And I like, I love learning with others and from others. And I think, so the reason I did the Camtasia meetup was just to meet like-minded people who use the system differently. So how I create something, somebody else might be using the same tools, but my, in a completely different way. So last night there was, um, there was a few of us and it was just, it's really informal, but we just learn together. Um, it's always quite inspiring and we share videos and after the meeting, we then go off and look to see what each other's been doing. And it's, it's, it's really inspiring. And very similar to your show that you did, it's great to see other people's work, isn't it? Yeah, yes, definitely. That's what I, I like doing. Um, but yes, thank you for sharing those links. So what I thought I'd show you, first of all, is this the uh, techsmith.com website? And one of the things that inspired me to start making um, GIFs is that in their help pages, they do these little movement of videos. So they mm. give you description of this is the the ripple move so it gives you some text but also alongside of that it gives you a visual explaining how you actually perform that process in the software so i really like this it just repeats it's just on a loop so um some are faster and, and some are slower and that's what sort of inspired me so i'm going to show you now one of my end results and this is how i use my gifts so i make gifts of using Camtasia. So this is mm. one of my Twitter ones. So what I will do is I've added some text of the explaining, you know, what the problem might be or what the issue might be. And then this loops in um, Twitter. You've seen them. We've had funny ones about animals and things like that. You can make those as well in Camtasia, but I tend to do ones that are um, screencasts, so software tutorials. Mm. So the idea it just moves along this is um about 14 seconds i think so it's a screen recording and then i've just added text that i think would be helpful visuals to help um the viewer around the software love it so simple yeah so okay for people watching a gif you can't or can you pause and play it or is it just on a loop? So if you, you kind of have to follow and take your own notes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, um, I think depending on where you're hosting them. So mm -hmm. in LinkedIn, you can't upload a GIF, but you can upload the same video as an MP4. And depending on the duration, it will loop in LinkedIn as a GIF. And it's about 14 seconds. Um, but if it's an MP4, obviously you can then pause it. So I did one the other day, which is a bit longer. And I thought, actually, this just deserves to be an MP4. Um, it, it wasn't a looping GIF. Um, I tend to find that the GIFs sometimes go quite quickly. So you'll probably watch them more than once. Um, because it might be, oh, you know, I miss that. But because mm -hmm. they're only 14 seconds, it's not too time consuming to watch it again. Yeah. That's um, cool. I think that time as well reflects, like if I think about things on Instagram, um, like they have a 15 second, second time limit on the video that you can upload or certain things that you display. So it's that time limit that you're putting on is used in other aspects of the world that we're used to. So I think that's an important thing to consider as well and trying to limit it because I guess that's the decision that you were talking around and is it a GIF or is it a video? Yeah. Um, and that's a really good point because with um, a video, like a, an explainer video or an informational video, you can add, I'm going to just move out of this because it's going to make me dizzy. I'm going to just go into Camtasia and then I'll show you what the interface is and I'm going to show yeah. you how I made it. Um, that's the other thing with gifts. If you watch them, you get a bit dizzy, don't you? So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, 
a GIF standalone, it's just visuals, there's no sound. So you really have to be careful in choosing the visuals and the text that goes alongside it. You don't want it to be distracting, but you need to be able to guide them mm. um, to what you're trying to explain or what you're trying to highlight. Whereas yeah. I guess um, a proper video, you've got the option to add captions, you've got the option to add audio, um, and uh, lots more information. Yeah. Um, and it, but yeah, if you... Oh yeah, go on, sorry. I was just gonna say, it's, it's using the right um, media for the right occasion, isn't it? So there's a very specific, you know, where I place these. They work great in Twitter, I think. Um, as I ex showed you that TechSmith one, I thought that's quite good because it's just a help page. And I think it works really, really nice there. Mm, yeah. And I think um, one thing that's coming to mind, you'll probably be able to shed more light on is the file size. So what would you say in terms of a 15 second GIF is like a video that's 15 seconds like two times, 10 times, a hundred times bigger than a GIF or? Question, and I'm going to have to test that out. You give me something to do today now, Kim. Okay. Oh my, I'm going to do some investigation. <laughs> Follow um, Jane on Twitter if I <laughs> <laughs> response. <laughs> no, but file size is so important, isn't it? Because, you know, somewhere like Twitter where I post these, you know, mm. I sometimes and it won't upload because it exceeds the file size. Mm. So then I will go in and I'll change the frame rate to try and reduce the file size. <clears throat> I might speed it up to try and um, make it a shorter video. Um, but doing a direct comparison, I haven't ever done. Um, the other interesting thing is the tool that you use, I understand in Snagit, which is the, the younger sister of Camtasia, is a screen recorder and you can make GIFs in there as well. Um, that produces a smaller um, file, a GIF file. So I, I don't know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I'm not sure about the technical elements yeah. and the codecs and things like that and the frame rates and bit rates. It's not my expertise, but mm. you're right, is it? Because there are certain differences depending on how you make it and the duration. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I know that increases the file size is the, the movement. So the more um, text annotations you add in or the clip speed and that increases the file size. So I try to do it with minimum, but enough that's effective. Yeah, I like that. I think that holds you accountable to like focus on the need to know and not the nice to know. Yeah. So it really makes you plan the GIF or the information that you're trying to communicate. It did, and, and, and I'm really pleased that you, you raised that point because planning, I think, is really key. And mm. even for a 14-minute GIF, I will still plan out. It's not a big storyboard, but I will, what are the important steps? What do I really need to cover to meet the purpose of this video, whether it's a GIF or a video? Yeah. Um, and not get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Those mistakes. Uh, um, you know, when I first started, oh, whilst I'm on this screen, I'll just show you here. Oh, and um, I'm going to show you how to access X. Yeah. Do it four ways. Let me show you all those four ways. And I don't do that anymore. It's the purpose of this video is to show you the best way, yep. the quickest way, most efficient way to do a job or a process. Um, yep. And I tend to, you know, that is what will be in that video. It keeps it short, it keeps it to the point, and that comes back to what you were talking about in the video and the GIF. The GIF, you have to get to the point as soon as possible. Mm. There isn't time to do any explanation. You know, it's really, this is, you want to be able to achieve this, you do one, two, three, and you do it as quickly as possible. But that's- How did you learn about um, I guess there was some sort of reflection that you went through to go, hold on, Jane, don't be trying to put everything into this one video. You've said it's about this. 
what was your process to figure that out to then improve? I think people could learn a lot from your process of how you figured that out for yourself. I had the fortune of working with um, a brilliant guy called Gary Dickelman. Okay. Uh, I was a freelancer for Travelport, which is um, a travel industry company. And he, he was um, a consultant came in and shook up the training department and brought in this, um, oh, what was he? Yeah, um, it was a, not, not, not dissimilar to what you're doing, a, a centered approach, um, mm. really getting to the point. And it was, I learned so much from him and, and he guided me really. Um, I always remember he always used to say that I was like a sponge mm. because I would just, I love learning and I love, you know, learning from other people. And it was quite inspiring what he was telling me. Um, yeah. so that was the turning point really. That was about probably about seven years ago. Um, yeah. he, he, um, yeah, he made sense. <laughs> so that's how I changed my approach. Yeah, that's cool. I think even like watching your work back as well like if you make a gif and then you watch it back as a user whether that means you upload it and look a gif or a video anything that we put out um but looking at it on a different device so you kind mm -hmm. of looking at it from a user perspective and then you definitely pick up things because you're like yes it's perfect it's ready for the world <laughs> and then you go and look at it and you're like oh my god it's so like <laughs> how did i miss that thing or like i've yeah. rambled there or i've like gone off topic you know that's not actually meeting the objective i'm saying that the person's going to get so i think watching your stuff back as well can definitely help you improve totally i mean i I cringe if I if I look at any videos that I did eight years ago and I'm, I'm still learning and they're not perfect but I think they have improved um and listening to my voice I hated recording myself mm. I've got used to it and um but yeah I, I look back and think oh why did I do that and why have I used different colors and I, I don't know it's, it's yeah. good learning we always learn. I think right. we're curious we can get better <laughs> I feel the Absolutely. same. Brilliant. And um, the other thing that you mentioned there was um, thinking about the device, where it's going to be hosted, where you're going to be viewed, because that's a really good point in making videos because the resolution is important. Um, are they going to be watching it on a smartphone? Is it going to be in portrait? Um, so yesterday, for example, I was... Um, I won a competition, Kim, and I won a book. And my book arrived yesterday, um, oh. all about smartphone video, which is really what I've, I've been learning more and more. And as a company, we focus on video. And my husband does a lot more on the smartphone video side. Mm -hmm. And um, so I thought, I'm going to, this is, I'm going to grab this opportunity and make a video. But the author does a lot on Instagram. Now, I don't do that much on Instagram. But I thought there was an opportunity there. And so I needed to think about the resolution because having a landscape video, you know, because you use Instagram mm. a lot more than you do. So you're, you can probably advise me on this. Um, but having a landscape video isn't great on Instagram, is it? It's small, but to be honest, I don't care about that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm probably not the best person to say, they, I guess they do encourage you to always go portrait because you can't flip their app to work on your phone. If you turn your phone into landscape, the app stays in portrait. So they're always trying to encourage people to use the portrait, which means you're kind of in selfie mode, which is very different from, especially if you're recording on like the DSLR fancy cameras that are widescreen and, you know, the dimensions are very different. So yeah, continue. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I ended up doing um, a one by one yesterday on the phone and it, it worked, but then I can repurpose that. But having the where it's going to be hosted is really important. And within Camtasia, so this is the Camtasia interface. This is the first time you've probably seen this then, Kim. Um, it is, yeah. So very it briefly. It honestly makes me overwhelmed. I have to put that out there. It scares um, me because Premiere Pro scares me. 
<laughs> so when I see this, I'm like, oh, it's like Premiere Pro, <laughs> and it scares me. But I, you're gonna t tell me to be all good with it by the end of this it video. Is, <laughs> it is all good, and um, yeah, I, I get that it's overwhelming. And um, but all you need to really think about is that we've got a canvas which is here, which is where you see your video playing. So yeah. this is the end result. We then have tracks, which is where you build up your project. So your elements that you want to go into your video. Mm. Down the left hand side, we have um, our tools, which you can open and close. Um, then if I've got um, an item open, we then we might have to just move our videos there, Kim. But then we have um, properties, which mm -hmm. you then color, opacity and, and things like that. So. Yeah. It's a reasonably simple interface, but I get that it can be quite daunting. There's lots going on. Um, I well, don't... I'll just say I've just I'm going to hold myself accountable because when you've explained that now, I've gone, oh, the similarities that I see here are in other programs I've used, and now I I see I'm seeing it with a whole new view of the program because I'm just like that's the properties menu there's the timeline in articulate and that ribbon that's yeah. normally at the top is down the left hand side in this one so yeah. now I, feel, I actually feel more comfortable i'm good <laughs> fantastic so let me just um i'm just going to shrink that so we can see a few more of the tracks yep i'm just going to let me just close the properties and then um so we can zoom in here and things like that so let me just take you, I'm just going to press play. And what you'll see as the playhead, which is just down here, um, as it runs through the timeline, you'll see that the video plays on the canvas. So this is the finished article. And then what I'll do is I'll just um, answer, answer any questions that you have about the elements that I use. Okay. And that's it. Cool. So, <clears throat> any initial questions, Kim? Um, no, you take me through, and then if you don't cover them, I'll talk to you, I'll ask. So, one of the things that I do with Camtasia, and I recommend others when they um, start out with Camtasia, is to customize and set up their interface um, or this is the Camtasia mm. editor, with their branding colors any preferences and things like that so as you see through here I've got an orange text box with a gradient it's a little bit of opacity I've got some text with some arrows um, these are colors that I've chosen and what you can do within Camtasia is really set it up that it is works more efficient so you can your editing is a lot faster and the way we can do this is if i go into a file and i'm going to go into manage themes so themes is one where we can set up our own colors mm. and it could that if um, i work with clients to make them screencast videos and so this i would build their own brands in here so then when i come to um, make their videos I would have different colors. So if I go into Ravion, which is my company one, you'll recognize I've got the orange there and the different colors. You can add also the logo. Um, I always use Arial, so I tend to just um, select the, the um, font style in here. You can add more. So that's one thing that I would always recommend that that is saved uh, and set up first. Yeah. And the, um, the next thing I would do is if you're going into annotations, 
Um, let me just show you if it was just all of them. So these are annotations that come with Camtasia. Mm. These are all customizable. So what I would tend to do is start setting up my own and then I would store them and make them a preset. So a preset then would be under user. So these are two that I specifically created with my colors, with the outline opacity. So then yeah. when I'm using them, they're just quick and easy. And then I can also click on this star and move them to the favorites. Now this isn't um, a huge um, amount in here, but you get to see that, you know, making these favorites, they're quick and easy to use. Yeah. Um, so if I was to take, just go to the black hand, the end of the video. So this is the end of um, the canvas. I've changed my canvas color to orange. So if there wasn't any um, media on the timeline, that's just my background color. So you can yeah. change that. Um, you've got lots of different options here. This is where you choose your video size. So this is the size that I use specifically for Twitter, uh, the background color. And that's where that is. So if I was to use um, one of these, I can either drag it just to the timeline. Yep. You'll see that it appears on the, the track. Mm. Once it's here, I then go into properties. And this is where you can um, tweak the colors, outlines. But because I've set it up as a favorite, I shouldn't really need to change anything other than um, just clicking on it and changing the text. Yeah. That's cool. It makes it way more efficient for those things that you continuously reuse. I love that tip. So let's do, so we just make one, would that be useful? Go on. So let's say if we, so in annotations, as I say, you've got all of these different styles. You've got cloud bubbles, text bubbles, and it's, that sometimes to me is, is the challenge. What is the simplest, most effective to use that's not over fussy. Um, so, I don't know, Let, let's, I'm not quite sure what our message is going to be, but let's say mm -hmm. we want a cloud bubble. And let's say, um, what's some of your colors, Kim? Have you got some particular company colors? You use pink a lot, don't you? Uh, yeah, purple and blue. So I guess blue would be the main one, a light blue. I don't have the hex code for you, but just pick like a sky blue. Oh, purple. Oh. Ish. <laughs> I'll be um, happy. <laughs> okay. And the color of the text, would you generally have white? Yeah. That tends to work. Um, so then let's say, um, you wanted to, I don't know, you wanted this to be a bit longer, for example, mm -hmm. or if you wanted to put um, a border around it, I'm not sure what a border would look like, but under, um, we've got um, border, I'm not quite sure what this would look like. No, oh, that's not going to look like, that's not going to work on that. Yeah, it's putting it around the image itself. That's gone around the image. That wasn't good, Jane. Let's control Z. Undo that. What else would we add here? Maybe we change the gradient, maybe, or the opacity. Yeah. Can we do like a drop shadow? Uh, you can do the drop shadow. Yes. Uh, let's... Oh, cool. So you click and drag it onto the... Looking yeah. good. Looking schmick. <laughs> and that was, I think, that, um, about 2018. I think they, they brought out the, the just click and drop. And that was a, a massive speed. Mm -hmm. Process up really, really well. Um, so, um, yeah. So then if you wanted to change... Um, what do you use? What font do you use? Yeah, Ariel's fine. You, you get the idea. Um, yeah. So anything here, um, so then this would be your, your call out. 
So then we could then, um, this plus sign, it's a bit hidden, but if we add this as a preset, it will then go into those annotations under user. So these are my user defined ones. Yeah. Um, so you'll see it straight away pop here. This little fella just shows this uh, user. I've changed the style here. And then I've also got this little, um, if I wanted it then to be in my favorites. So you've got two places. You could either come in, find it here. I use my favorites an awful lot. So if I've gone to the effort of making a preset, I probably would then do a favorite as well. Yeah. When I'm adding, um, it's just here. I'm just going to delete that one. Yeah. And then you can still resize it, rotate it as you want it to. Yep. You get the idea. Mm. Um, the other How would thing... you change? Oh, yeah, go on. No, you go. What was your question? I was just going to say um, on the timeline, if I wanted it to appear for one second and disappear, how do you make that edit? Excellent question. So all the, um, the annotations are a set default time of five seconds. Okay. And it's just taking your arrow to the end, dragging out, reducing it. Oh, that's very simple. Yeah. So you can do that with any image, um, your call outs. Um, it's slightly different if you've got a screen recording, but you can on a screen recording, let's say for example, I've recorded a process mm. and I'm adding an audio over the top. I generally do mine separate. And let's say the audio I need takes me longer and I need more screen time. Mm. So then you can extend a frame. Let's see if I can do it here. I'll show you an example, which I think is really, really cool. So I'm mm. just going to make some space. Just let me delete that. I'm just going to make some space here. I'm going to click on the shift. And I'm just going to move this out the way to make some space here on the track. Yep. This frame here, let's say I need it to stay on that frame for a little bit longer. Yep. Just move my. Yeah. Um, if I use the Alt key, which is one of my um, keyboard shortcuts, you see that the playhead has changed to a little video. I do. Yeah. I drag this to the duration I want it to be, and it's taking an exact copy of that last frame. So then it enables me then to match it perfectly with the audio I want to say. So That's as you cool. see here, the screen won't change. And then what I can do is then again click on shift and drag everything back. So it closes that gap. Yeah, very cool. So that instead of a like, Sometimes what you do is like the video ends and you can try and take a screen capture of it and then put that in as an image. But I really love that this has just captured that last frame and then extended it essentially. And, and that's, you can do exactly that as well. So if you wanted, um, if I put the playhead on the frame that I am looking for, um, mm. you can export control and F or export frame as. And then you can populate it into your project. So that's, yeah, another way of doing it, Kim. Hmm. And those shortcuts, how you're doing the shift and the alt, are they your personal ones or they're part of, they're pre-programmed into Camtasia already? Great question. They are pre-programmed. You can customize some of the keyboard shortcuts. And I'm a big advocate of keyboard shortcuts. I don't know them all. But I'm really, um, I'm going to start a series. I've said it now, so I've got, you've got to hold me accountable for it. Um, <laughs> I'll be checking. To, <laughs> to use the keyboard shortcuts because they are so time saving. But also the upside of doing that, it's helping me learn and use them and get better mm. at using them. Yeah, so, I love that. Um, for anyone uh, wanting them, they're under the help menu and you've got keyboard shortcuts. It will take you off to techsmith.com. And there's just a, a whole list. And normally when I do my, my training, um, which is usually face to face and I'm really missing it, um, I will print these out for people. And then it's a good way of understanding the capabilities as well. So if, you know, like the extend the yeah. frame, you might not think, well. Yeah, I guess it's a really good way to understand what's possible. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I, I, I will do that. I was thinking of doing some little images. I like your images that you've been doing. 
um, you know, just getting the message across, they're really effective. So I thought I would try and do something, mm. but I'm not a perfect designer, Kim. So I need to, <laughs> I need to set up my... Well, my you know what? I think, yeah, you don't need to be. Even just pen and paper, like, can be very effective, like on a little post-it note. People are so forgiving and also it's so novel. So don't let it hold you back. That's very kind. And um, I, I did start doing it in Camtasia because what I like in Camtasia is that mm -hmm. if you're screen recording, if you are using control um, and shift and things like that, you can actually put it in the video. Okay. So if I went into annotations, um, you've got all these different call outs. Yeah. And if I go into this keystroke callouts, and let's just say I added this one. Yeah. So this how this was my thinking of a visual to show people what you could possibly do. So yeah. let's say I wanted um what did I use? I just used shift, didn't I? But yeah. um in the properties now on the right hand side, you can see it says control and A, which is then what the visual will you, you will see. If I press shift, it just changes. And I love these because again, it's just that simple visual. So again, a video that hasn't got audio, if you're just saying, you know, you use the shift key, I think it's a really effective visual way of getting that messages across. Yeah, that's cool. Is that you um, manually put it, so say you've done your screen recording, because I noticed when you were showing your example, your mouse is moving and then you, for example, you click on something and then this little like beautiful ring comes out to show that you've interacted. So if you are doing your video is, and say you did a shift click when that little ring goes out, does it know that you've done shift and indicate that? Or do you have to manually go and put this like, or control V? um call out onto the recording itself that's a great question and as far as i know this part putting the visual of control v is a manual process okay. but what Tasia does it records all the mouse movement and clicks mm. so the ring you've seen is because i have so I'm not sure that you can see, I've got effects on my screen recording is down here. It's split up a little bit, but there's a yeah. little one arrow. Yeah. And I have cursor effects. So it tracks the cursor. So I've got rings. So I've gone and chosen um, mm. cursor effect. I also use cursor smoothing, which is fantastic for screen recordings. It not only speeds up my process, uh, for recording because you have to really concentrate on the mouse movement that it's not mm -hmm. all over and distracting um but also it just makes that smoother effect for the for the viewer um so how i've done that is just going up to my tools panel we've got cursor effects so oh, yeah. you can do all of these different ones so what did I, I have uh, rings, I think. Um, yeah, it looks like that. I think. So, so when you left click, yeah. there you go, I've chosen this one. And yeah. then you can see on the properties, because I've got this, um, this clip selected, the properties, you've got your cursor here. Yeah. So these are my specific. So I've, again, I've chosen my company color. So yeah. you should, um, oh, I was looking for where it showed me themes. So if I click on this color, this yeah. is where you can select, actually, I want my company colors that I've set up for Ravion. Oh, nice. My orange, that's how I've cut that. That's cool. And so what it will do, I think there are, let's, Let's just have a look, see when it is the re um, ah, so there it is. Yeah. There must be, I can't see it. I did think there was a little dot. Now it could be that I just can't see it on my computer. I thought there was a dot, Kim, to highlight mm. when the click was. Right. 
I can't personally see it on, I'm looking at a very small screen. Oh. But I think it's marked. And then I guess that it makes me um, think about, and we've done training before, but not using this program where it is screen recording and the importance of like a rehearsal for your recording. Um, because I can imagine like <laughs> the pressure of trying to record something perfectly and then your mouse is like, oh, where is that thing next? So in the past, what we've had is we'll do it and we'll record it step by step. And then we have that piece of paper beside us showing us now move to here on the top left of the screen so that we're not kind of trying to work it out as we're doing the screen recording. But do you have any tips for how to rehearse so that you record it the most effective way for the learner? It's, it's the planning. Um, I storyboard. Um, the storyboard that I have is I have three different columns and I have a visual image. So I will use Snagit just to capture what I should be seeing on the screen, uh, yeah. the words I might be saying, and then uh, a column that's an instruction of what I should be doing next or where I should be clicking or if I'm yeah. putting information yeah. in. Um, now, whether that, that's just in a simple Word document or mm. for the gift, I probably won't do that, but I will put the steps down click here, move here, you know. Um, yeah. So I do plan. The run through, again, is a great, I, I, it does need a run through. And that cover that in my teaching, I recommend that you do that for a number of reasons, that it also highlights pop-ups that you might not be expecting to pop up. Um, and things change, don't they? So I think just practice know the system, know where you want to go. And that's one of the reasons why I do my audio separately. Everyone's different. Mm. And the reason I do that is because I can really concentrate on my screen recording elements that I am concentrating on, you know, moving up to the file and then I'm doing the next step. Yeah. If I was having to concentrate on the words I was saying as well, I think I would trip up and I don't think it would be as effective, but that's oh, yeah. probably, yeah. So then I will do the screen recording and then I will have my generally a script mm -hmm. and I will record the audio and piece them together. It is more time consuming and I know other people um, do it together or might do the audio first and then the screen recording oh. that helps yeah. with timing. Yeah, I guess then the lead there is the person doing the audio and they're watching what someone's doing on screen and then the person that's controlling the mouse just follows the audio and has the plan. So that is an efficient way. Well, it's two people as well, so you got to pay for the two people, like their wages. Um, but I like that idea. I am trying. I am going to try and do some more informal. So these are quite not formal, but more um, polished, if you like. Yeah. So if, I, if they don't need to be as polished, and it is just a quick, you know, I did one, um, I had a lovely one-to-one -one with a professor last week, and we, we just needed to go over a couple of, um, I think it was a reminder. She'd asked me a question quite close to the end, and I said, oh, I'll make a video. And then I came mm -hmm. off the call, Oh God, I've said I'd make a video. Um, not really keen being on, on camera and things, but that was informal. And I talked over what, you know, I was instructing. Yeah. It, was, it didn't need to be polished. Yes. Um, so I think it's really, you know, how much time do you have? Um, how quick do you need to get it out? Yeah. Um, would affect which route I go. Yeah. And the complexity of what is in your screen recording, I guess. And then your familiarity with the tool, because sometimes we're brought in as people, trainers, but we're not experts in the system that we're trying to record. So I guess yeah. that's another factor as well. Yeah. If you make a mistake, 
<laughs> when I make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, asking for a friend. <laughs> um, so just say I'm recording and then I forget my next step and I'm mucking around looking, but I'm still recording. Then I find my place and I continue recording. In my screen capture, is there a way to snip? and then like delete it out or how do I deal with that? Or do I have to start from the beginning? Um, no, and it's common. Um, I do make mistakes or um, something will appear and it wasn't supposed to, it wasn't in my plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> is you can pause the recording. So once you started screen recording, I would probably pause it, make, go back to the position it should have been and then in editing, remove that section. Um, once you, uh, a, a note there, once you pause, and then you've obviously moved your cursor to reset the software, um, Camtasia will remember where your cursor was when you paused it, which I really like that. That's so you very see the cursor magically appearing. Um, so then all you would do, this play had as a um, playhead has multi-functionality. Um, so if, for example, um, there was, um, oh, let me see, let me just choose one that's quite straightforward to remove. I don't know. Let, let's say there's something in here that I, I didn't capture mm -hmm. properly. Um, what we can do is use this playhead for a selector and then it has um, functionality you can use with that selection. So if I was to, with the green, you can go either way. So let's say I worked out that if I press play now, it will just show me what that section is. Yeah. Actually, there's nothing. Um, I'm just pressing the space bar to play, by the way. Um, there isn't any movement. So let's say it was too long, for example, for this one. Now, the selection goes over a number of tracks. If I just delete that, it's gonna affect the other tracks as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a different options I can do. Um, so it really depends on the situation. If, I'm gonna right click, just to give you the context menu so you can see what you can do. I've got the option to delete everything that's highlighted on all tracks and that would leave the gap i'll do it actually so you can see it yeah, so it leaves the gap so it's chopped that off uh, i'll just do control z to undo if for example i wanted to remove that error or remove that duration of uh clip and i wanted to close the gap because i didn't have anything to replace in there we can also do the ripple delete. So this will remove it, but also move everything from the right to the left mm. and close it. So it stitches it. That's cool. But I think for your scenario, it could be that you might remove it or you might re-record it. So I've had to do that before where I've something's not been quite right. Yeah. And I might re-record it and then I would replace it. So I would probably delete and then replace the new bit. Right. Then there's a bit of matching to do with the cursor for that. Okay. What about, so you've got that blue select part there. What mm -hmm. if I want track two, I'm happy with. My little orange thing, I don't want that to change, but I want the blue part to be deleted from track one. How can I make sure that track two isn't impacted? I love your questioning and it's it, they're perfect. Along here, we've got little a padlock. Oh, yeah. Track. We've also got a little eye, which is a, a disable the track. So that just means that you, you wouldn't view it, which is useful. Um, I've, I've had comparison of audios. So I've done maybe two audios and I'm listening to see which is best. So I'll yeah. disable one and listen to the other. Yeah. This other one, magnetic track. Um, so these little icons are really useful. So to answer your question, I would lock track two. Yeah. So that if I delete, just using the keyboard delete, um, 
it just affects the unlocked tracks. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, that's good. I'm sure you're seeing similarities though with the software that you use. Yeah, but it's funny, I have to ask the question and then I'm like, oh, yes, that is like the other ones that I use. Um, maybe I'm just tired and not using my brain properly. And I have a coach here today, so I just want you to tell me the information. I don't want to think. So thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. And I, and I think most of the time you could probably work out, you know, but it's that speed to the knowledge, isn't it? And you know, where to look for those things, yeah. I think sometimes, like, you, you're like, what menu is it in? Or what um, section or properties part is it in? Where is it hidden, basically, on the interface? Yeah. So, before we wrap up, Jane, I want to know what cool things that you haven't shown us that are something that make your life easier. Ooh library thing over there I want to know yeah, there's a couple mm -hmm. of things library well spotted um let me just show you the library so Camtasia um comes with a full library of intros music lower thirds that sort of way you can have the strap line coming up at the bottom with name and maybe a title of your video um really take a look in here these are fantastic and so let me just show you uh, i'm just gonna double click on these give you a little example so these are pre-made animated titles oh that that's all awesome. all customizable so if for example i'm setting up um let's just take some of these things out just unlock that let me show you what this looks like on the track so Camtasia have kindly created a, a lot of these uh, nice little backgrounds. So you can customize these, so choose one. So I, I'm all about sort of keeping consistency, getting your branding out there, using your colors. And so if you set those up in the themes that we mentioned, you can mm. also use them in these um, titles. Did you like either one of those, Kim? I like the, uh, yeah, show us this. Okay. I love that that's already made. That makes oh, yeah. life so much easier. That. So I've just right clicked. I'm going to add to timeline play. I had my play headers at the, at the end of our video that we had. Yeah. So it just drops it down here. You just, yeah. Um, you can see that I'm just increasing the, the height of the tracks here. Just move. Mm -hmm our videos out the way um, and you'll you'll notice that this little plus it just means it's been grouped so there are a set of um, items that are all grouped together yeah I think on the plus I'm still keeping within the group but it's just really interesting to see how it's built mm. and so by learning I like to look at these and unpick them and see how they've they've been created because these are created by pros at TechSmith and you can see um, there's a few different things here. Um, if I click on this one, you can see that this is this text here. Yeah. Also in here, you've got um, an embedded group. So let's have a look at that one. Oh, so now I can see that these little symbols here, these are our animations, so our movement. Mm -hmm. So one set of visual properties to another. So if I just move the um, playhead over that, you get the idea that that's that movement. Mm. what we can do so now we can see what the elements are inside just close these so the group is here if i draw your attention to the properties um you can see here where the text is so this was the word text smith camtasia and a, a subtitle so this is where it becomes let me just show oh, if i go here you'll see yeah when i change so what's gonna happen now i'm very excited this is amazing. Oh, what would the time Well, be? I didn't predict that, but that's even way more amazing than I, what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> How do I spell your name? Have I spelled it right? No. Uh, t almost. T-U-O-H-Y. Oh, that's it. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 
you could have, I don't know, if we were doing our interview, for example. So you're introducing our video. Yeah. The other thing that you could do is if I select my theme and go into Ravion, it's automatically changed my so good. Obviously it's, yes, yeah, we might need to tweak, but we can tweak um, if you wanted to. And mm. then what I do, so once this is perfect, I would then add it to my library. So I wouldn't need to keep changing this. So then if I, so in my library, I've got my own library. Yeah. Of bits and pieces that I use. So if I add this to the library, I could call it, I don't know, uh, Taipan for example. Um, you've got a couple of different options here. I'm just going to use the canvas size on this one. Yep. And there you see it there. So if I just delete it from the timeline, so let's say I created a new project and I yep. wanted to, um, can you see that? Our videos keep getting in the way. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just add it to the timeline and it's there with all. Oh, that's very good. It's not quite right. <laughs> It's close, but I, I love the idea of the simplicity of like, you don't have to go into the group to go find out where the text is and change it. You can just do it there in the properties and like having those theme colors. That's brilliant. Because I, anytime I've tried to do that in the past, maybe it is possible in the other tool. Now I'm going to have to go have a look. Um, but I've had to manually go click on my rectangles and change colors for each individual yeah. thing. So I love that. Tip. Yeah. Um, so library, it's not quite right, but I'd need to work on that. Um, so the library, definitely either use it for the assets that are already there or for anything. So any of these, if I knew I, I, I wanted this section, for example, you could highlight this section and I want to reuse it. Um, add timeline selection to library. So it's all about repurposing, reusing it, making it easy, accessible. So I use the library uh, um, quite a bit. Um, the other thing that you asked me about was um, time, efficiency, creating projects. Yeah. In Camtasia 2020, they, um, they made Camtasia templates, which I must say are, are brilliant. If you're creating a number of videos, mm. brilliant for consistency, you can set up a video project with elements that you're always going to use. So for example, you might have your start, your end, you might always have um, an image of the speaker, you might always have a lower third, for example. So you could set that up. I'll show you an example. Um, I mean, I could actually, you can actually make, I could turn this GIF project into a template. So then if I, make another GIF, I roughly know that um, I've got certain elements in there. The zoom at the right side. Let's get rid of that for a minute. If I go, um, so what I could do is I could um, save this project as a template. So the next yep. time I get to make a video, I open this template. Now, I probably wouldn't want the screen recording. So what I might do, I would probably tweak this a little bit. What you can do is um, change these to placeholders. So the placeholder will just be, um, I'll show you what it looks like. Mm, thank you. So I know that if I open this, it still has all my elements that consistently appear in each video. So I know for my new video, I would come in here and put my title in. Mm. Um, and I will probably delete the rest of this if I don't need it. Um, so then if I was then to open it from a, a template, if I open a new project from a template, it's going to ask me, do I want to save this? And I'm going to say no for the minute. So it's 
So these are templates that I've already made. So I'll show you, where's the default one? I like the default one. So I'm just gonna select, this comes free with Camtasia. Yeah. It's just gonna open up a new project. And this is what you'll see. You'll see the group here um, mm -hmm. with the intro. Let me play it, then you can see what it is. Thank you. Yeah, cute. I'm just gonna pause here. So this is what we call a placeholder. So it's giving you instruction, your screen record, recording goes here. And it's already saying, drag your media onto the placeholder on the timeline. So if I had a piece of media, um, I haven't got a piece of media, but if I had a, a recording file, I would drag it down to here and just replace this. Very good. So then as you go through, you've got your recording file. Um, it's already got a transition here, which is a little blur, so it fades out. I think that's what that one is. Um, and then you've got the ending. But again, yeah. what you would do, Kim, is you would take a little bit of time just to customize this, make it your own, have your own colors, and then you would make this your own template. Yeah. That's so, cool. That I just see, like, because I think coming up with those things of like, it, it's so simple. It's a square turned on its side, popping on screen and growing, you know, but like to think of that from scratch is actually so challenging for me anyway. So to be able to just um, pull them from a library and the templates is such a great time saver. Isn't it? I think, and I, I'm, I am not a graphic designer. I like the creativity of a video and I like, you know, adding some movement. I haven't even shown you behaviors yet. There's so much to show you, Kim. But um, yeah, these are anim pre-programmed animations that just make a video editor's life so much easier, quicker. Yeah. It makes you look great and you haven't really done anything because it's oh, wow. already there. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't be able to come up with, I mean, well, I do. We do get asked, can you create our title slide? So we do do it, but actually I look for the, look at these for inspiration. Mm. Ask my client, because there, there's also loads of templates um, on the techsmith.com website. Mm -hmm. So there are, um, some are paid, there is a subscription. Um, but yeah, if you don't, not keen on this one, or you think this one, you, you know, it could be that if everyone uses it, then you'll start there. That's Camtasia, yeah. and that's, you know, so you, you want a little bit of uniqueness, don't you? Yeah. Um, so I have, um, you know, I, I do use these for inspiration, but for speed, they're brilliant. Um, yeah, I can see that. That's the templates. Let me just show you very quickly, because I mentioned behaviors. If I added um, one of my... My canvas is um... so at the minute, as soon as this playhead hits that, it just appears. Yeah. So what you might consider is in my GIF, you saw that um, they popped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have a pre. Um, a customized behavior, we call them behaviors. You can't see them in here on the tools, but if I click on more, it's just a little bit hidden on my screen. Hmm. They're all pre-programmed animations and effects that you can just drag onto any piece of media. Hmm. And depending on what the piece of media is, it will, it will work slightly differently. Well, so I definitely say, want to see this explode one, so chuck that on. I need to, I want to know what it, how it behaves. <laughs> let me show, well, before I do, let me yeah. just add some text then because it will work differently with individual letters. I'm going to put these yeah. on the screen at the same time. So I've layered it so they'll appear on the screen at the same time. Okay. So this is just simple text. Yeah. 
Yeah, this one is a text box because you've got the color in the background. Yeah. So if I add the explode as requested to both of these, so I'm just dragging it, highlighting in green, just drop it. The behavior is added. I'm just going to play it so you can see what it looks like. Yeah. Ah, yeah. So just treat it differently depending on the makeup. Yeah, let me just um, let me just take these further along so we can see it without the. Um... Without the other animation there. Yep. Hmm. So it, this as one, but this it teaches, uh, treats each individual letter. Yep. Cool. Um, if we did, um, you can multi-layer these as well, which can be crazy. Um, just delete that. If I, the one that I was using was pop up, mm -hmm. um, which I quite like, and it tends to be my thing for, for gifts. Just pops up from the bottom and that has a, a little waver in the middle and then pops down. But what you can do is in the properties, customize them. So I, depending on my video, Kim, if it's more of an instructional video, I don't, I find the waving around a bit distracting. Yeah. Great for marketing, messaging. So what I tend to do is you've got three points that you can change oh. for the movement coming in, what happens during, and we've got pop-up still. Um, so what I'll tend to do is select none, but you can, you can customize these, you can mix them around so you can really make quite a unique effect just for you. Yeah. Um, and then change the out. You can change direction, you can change all sorts. Let's have a look now. So you still get the pop-up coming on, but then it's static. Yeah. It's, it's not wobbling. So they're your behaviors. So I, I think they use with caution and only if they're going to, you know, add, uh, help your video. Um, I do, I must say when the behavior, behavior, can't say it, behaviors came in, um, I really love, I got quite excited about behaviors. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why. It's cool. I feel like there's um, probably a part two to the video, like an advanced level one. But what I really appreciate you showing today, Jane, is like, I definitely can see the value of a tool like this and pinpoint projects where I would use it as well. And then also thinking about how I use some of the other tools that I'm already familiar with in different ways. So I appreciate that. You're very welcome. I've absolutely loved, well, you can tell that I'm quite enthusiastic about it yeah. a long time. Um, really like it. And I love finding things that help me. And I like to share those with others. Um, mm. View that it might help them too. Yeah. So follow Jane. Links in the description because it sounds like you're going to be putting out more gifts, tips in future as well on top of the stuff that you already share. Do yep. you have a, an affiliate link for Camtasia? Uh, we're a, an approved reseller actually. So if um, looking for licenses, then we have, um, um, we, we do special pricing on Camtasia. And uh, I'm delighted to be a TechSmith recommended trainer. So if you're looking for trainers, I'm listed on their website as well, which was a massive, massive, uh, brilliant. I, I, you know, that was a, what's the word? I was quite proud at that moment. That was really Yeah, nice. that's really awesome. Well, now I'm with the famous person basically in the Camtasia world. <laughs> yeah, so I feel privileged. <laughs> well, oh, thank you likewise. so much for sharing. I appreciate it because I feel like you can go explore tools, but there's so many to explore. So I really appreciate this dedicated time to be able to be taken through it and to have my curiosity 
answered through, you know, you answering my questions. So thank you, Jane, for being on the bell. You're very welcome. I've absolutely loved it, Kim. And anytime, part two, bring it on. <laughs> Sounds good, definitely. Um, and yeah, everyone say thank you to Jane and share your appreciation in the comments. And I guess we would love if you download a free trial or whatever it is and you experiment with it, post that stuff on social media and tag us so we can see what you're creating and be inspired as well for our projects. Absolutely. If you do also hashtag made with Camtasia, that's a bit of a thing. And the free trial is 30 days. Just go to techsmith.com. And um, yeah, any questions, I'm always here to help. There you go, people. Have an awesome day. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. watching. And share this video with anyone that you think it will add value to.